Tonight, you're watching Slumber Party with Ophira Kayla. So now, make some noise in the comments, in the form of comments, for o- your host, Ophira Kayla. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Slumber Party. Uh, the First show of September on September 1st. It will be hard to do it earlier in September. Uh, Anyways, welcome, welcome. Uh, Thank you, thank you for being here. My name is Ophira and I am a white, fat, disabled human. Uh, I have curly brown hair that's up in a bun. And for those of you who have seen the show previously, new addition to my visual description, I have side bangs now. It's very exciting. We might get into it later. Uh, I'm wearing turquoise thick rims glasses and a white and navy blue neck brace. I'm sitting on my couch uh, with a purple and gold kind of fabric backdrop. And I am wearing a a gray robe because comfort. I mean, if you're going to have a slumber party, you may as well be comfortable. Today, uh, for the show this evening, ah, hi Monica, thank you for joining us. Um, If you, (laughs) it's true, Uh, if you like or even love the side bangs, donate here to keep the show going. I will add, if you don't love the side bangs, you can also donate and maybe that will uh, give me enough money for hair extensions. I'm happy to kind of go in any direction, uh, depending on, you know, what everyone's feeling. We can talk about that later too, uh, because <laughs> at this sh- uh, for this show today, I am going to be joined by such a wonderful human. Uh, this person I first met in 2017. We were just talking about uh, before going live. Uh, he was in my improv class, and honestly, it was like the funniest person in the class. I we frequently had to pause scenes just because everyone was laughing so hard. Um, He's also an archivist, a Marie Kondo specialist, like absolute specialist, Um, a human who has saved me from falling set pieces on stage, Um, and just an all-around wonderful human and friend. So let's welcome Michael. 
Oh, Fira, you're going to make me flush or cry at the same time. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'm Michael. Uh, I am a cis male Asian man. I have short-ish black hairs growing with uh, black square, square framed glasses, uh, wearing a black t-shirt on my, on my, my left left is a desk with a television on it and on my right is my are my curtains which are silver and gold because they're fancy and right behind my head is a lamp that I will hide with my head. <laughs> it will come into vision as you swerve <laughs> in your chair back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is uh, the game of Spot the Lamp. Uh, we have so many things established for this show already and we just started. <laughs> so uh well wash hands good advice for for us all uh you know uh, fighting fighting the the covid fights um <laughs> through hygiene very important um so uh oh i also forgot to mention at the beginning my pronouns are both she her and they them um yeah michael how are you feeling well, to be honest, in uh, in an, it's, it's a little, it's been weird because of this thing called COVID nineteen, a global pandemic that has changed the face of life as we know it. It's true. It's like it's kind of a thing, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it's a thing that's happening that uh, you know affects uh, all of the things. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I don't know. Sometimes it's like I don't want to go like. Oh, look at the bright side of things but sometimes you have to and like one of the things is i'm so glad i can be on this show with you you know like i haven't performed really since i was in improv with you so many years ago and like this is like kind of this fun opportunity to to get back on this virtual digital accessible stage oh you're saying all of my favorite words um <laughs> I, I'm so glad uh, when I reached out to you to have you on this show, I was like, oh, I really hope he says yes. Um, I'm so glad you did. I Before we go any further, I want to say, because, you know, as people who have watched the show know, for those who are, it's their first time, they don't know, this is a slumber party. I am the host of that slumber party. And as the host of the slumber party, I just... I just like things to be organized. You know, I like to have some very specific rules so that we all know what's coming. We know the lay of the land. Uh, and then we can all, you know, be comfortable within an organized framework because, you know, fun comes with uh, rules, right? Yeah, of course. I put my fingers together and then put it in the fist to show they are together. Organization <laughs> and rules, fun equals fun. So without any further ado, let's go into the house rules. Oh, we have them! <laughs> Amazing! We have them up. The very first rule, arguably the most important rule of this show, is you do you. Truly, like, we'd love for you to engage with the show in whatever way works for you. Um, and that can come into play in lots of different things. Uh, that can involve how you uh, how you watch the show. You can turn the volume or brightness up and down on your computer. You can come and go. You can have a snack, a drink. You can curl up on your couch. You can have a dance party. You could even like do jumping jacks. I don't know. I'm disabled. Do people do that? Maybe. Um, and you also can chat with us, which I'm so glad some of you already have in the live chat that is on either to the side or below your screen. And you can ask us questions. Uh, throughout the course of this, we're going to be chatting away and we'd love to address any questions that you have. The next rule, uh, well, kind of a part B to the part A of the you do you. Uh, is to let you know what's going on. So in this show, there's going to be integrated visual descriptions. That's kind of what we already did at the top of describing what we look like. If there's any visuals, we will uh, let you know what they are. Um, there's going to be an archived recording of the show with professional captions added. And uh, that will live on the Bad Dog Comedy TV page for a little bit. Um, there will be music and there will also be, as a fair warning, a substantial amount of silliness. 
what there won't be are any strobe effects or sudden noises. Nothing uh, super jarring on the sensory front. So rule number two is that this party has a schedule because I've already established I like rules. I like structure. Um, I like to know what I'm getting into. So the first part we're already doing so great on the introduction and house rules. Halfway there, more than halfway there, really. Um, the next part is the entertainment portion uh, where Michael is going to be entertaining me and all of us, which is very exciting. Um, after that, we'll be having some snacks and chats, you know, as one does at a slumber party. And then we'll go into the time when everyone's just kind of a little bit loopy. You know, the party's been going on. We're all in that 2 a.m. kind of zone. And we will have some time for a little bit of silly fun before we all say goodnight, turn off our computers, and go to bed because it will be approximately 9.55, 10 p.m.-ish. And yeah, it's a weeknight. That's when we go to bed. Um, and the last rule is that this is a free party, but if you want to give a host gift, uh, right under this video, there's a link to baddogtheater.com slash slumber party where you can donate and keep this show and all of the wonderful shows on Bad Dog TV running. You can also hit the subscribe button to make sure that you keep up with, uh, with all of the shows because there's programming on Bad Dog TV every weekday, two shows, uh, shows at 4.30 and then also shows at 9 and 9.30 p.m in the evening. And yeah, those are the rules. Michael, how are you feeling? Do you feel settled? I feel really relaxed now that structure is in place. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad to hear you say that. <laughs> Some people find rules off-putting. <laughs> who? Rules are... I don't know them, the people who don't like rules. I mean, it's like going somewhere without a map. I get that there's a sense of adventure, but also you could have a map. I'm so bad at maps, it would help me. <laughs> I don't want this. regularly. <laughs> Even when I have like Google Maps saying directions at me, I end up, I have to like keep going in the wrong direction and get that like angry buzz on my phone of it being like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> oh, you get an angry buzz that corrects you? Sometimes, yeah. It's very insistent because it's like, you're not doing this right. And I've tried to tell you, but like, <laughs> clearly I need another method to gain your attention. <laughs> okay, rule structures. Entertainment is next on the docket. You're correct. How are you feeling? Are you feeling ready to move into this next stage? Yes. <laughs> Well, good, because, you know, this is the thing, my slumber party, um, I'm very relaxed. I have a bunch of pillows behind me. I'm comfortable and I'm just, I'm ready to be entertained. So without further, I've said this twice now, I think I'm going to keep it going through the show. Without, is it a dough or a do? It's a do. A do. It's that not a doe. It's not a doe. A doe is a deer and it's a female deer. Um... <laughs> That was a very funny joke, and I stand by it. <laughs> Without further ado, uh, let's move into the entertainment section. Okay, so what could be more entertaining than HBO's big hit that turned out super well and everyone loved it, Game of Thrones? <laughs> Uh, the joke is that it didn't turn out well, <laughs> famously. Uh, so, you know, I thought about it. And so I'm a person who has seen the show beginning and end, not beginning to end. I watched the first episode, a bit of the, the second episode, I guess, did not watch any of it. And then I watched the finale with my sister. And the only information I have is uh, BuzzFeed reaction meme reviews. <laughs> and so I'm going to try to tell you the epic tale of Westeros, uh, but to the best of my ability, which is zero ability. And then these like structures come out and then Game of Thrones. 
and it starts off, you have that actor guy, Sean. Uh, he's the main character. We all love him. He's the king of the north. He has kids. There's like a boy, a girl. That's Bran, Arya. Is it Bran? <laughs> Is it Bran? Do you know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Bran's one of the kids. Full disclosure, I've only watched a couple of episodes. Okay. There's Bran, there's Arya, there's uh, the redhead pretty one. <laughs> And then there's there's uh, Jon Snow, and Jon Snow's uh, uh, not really his son, and his wife, like, Sean's, Sean the King, his wife is like, I don't like that you have another son from someone else. And he's like, deal with it. And he's best friends with the king of Westeros, who comes to visit him with his wife. And his wife is Cersei, the hot blonde one, and she has a hot blonde brother. <laughs> and they are really close siblings. <laughs> How close, you would say? Well, close enough for Bran to catch them uh, in coitus in a tower. And then Jamie, the brother, pushes Bran out of the window. And that is when I stopped watching because I did not want to see more of these siblings doing the two. <laughs> um, can I talk about that here? It's yes. <laughs> yeah. Everyone knows. It's very famous that they, they're it's them. Okay, so Bran is now concussed and is in bed. And then um split scene. We're going to look at Daenerys. She's the queen of the dragons in the future. But right now she is but a very pale white-haired, silver-haired lady who is going to be married off to Jason Momoa. And it's very bad because Jason Momoa's character is like this mean horse guy who loves horses too much I think and he and um and Daenerys have like a really scary kind of like uh scene together but I recently learned that Jason Momoa wore a, a modesty sock during the scene and he he chose a bright pink one to to like make it less scary <laughs> because pink is the powerful color of joy <laughs> I think that's just episode one, to be honest. Okay, let's just fast forward because we're, we, need, we need to go fast. Okay, so then uh, he dies, <laughs> Jason Momoa dies, and Daenerys is like, I'm now going to take over, and I want to take over all of Easteros, because it's the opposite of Westeros, and I'm going to free everyone from slavery. I'm going to, and I have these eggs, and they're going to be dragons. Where are my dragons? That's the scene. Meanwhile, in Westeros, the king dies uh, from like a boar attack, and now they're like, oh my god, who's going to become the king? I know, it's going to be Cersei's kid, but also all her kids are from her brother, which is disgusting, and you should be disgusted. Um, it's meant to be disgusting. And so she puts her son Joffrey on the throne, but he's crazy. Like he like is, he's awful. He like hurts people with his king powers. And then Sansa, who is the pretty girl from the North Kingdom, has to marry him. And it's kind of bad. Uh, and then I think Arya disappears and then becomes an assassin in the background. And then the North falls. And then I think Joffrey, as king, makes Sean Penn's head fall off through execution. Uh, and then we skip, skip, skip. <laughs> And then Cersei, no, skip to skip, Joffrey dies. Cersei, uh, oh, he dies from poison. Uh, <laughs> Cersei becomes queen. And then she's like, I'm going to stand here with this glass of wine. And I'm going to watch the citadel explode. So she explodes the citadel, which like blows up her city kind of. But this is a good thing for her because now she's queen somehow. I skipped a lot, but this is, that's what's important. Um, <laughs> Jon Snow, he's sent to the, the wall where these like white walkers are and they're like these zombie guys, but they're actually turned out not to be important. Um, and then Jon Snow dies, spoilers, <laughs> everyone knows, and he comes back. <laughs> and then uh, a lot of stuff happened and then it's season eight, <laughs> the last season. <laughs> um, and, like a lot of stuff happens. Daenerys has her dragons, and she's like, I love my dragons. They're going to blow up everything. Cersei is like, I don't want these dragons to come near Westeros. Jon Snow is like, oh my god, these White Walkers are going to like kill everybody, probably. 
Arya is like, I am cool now. Oh, oh, and then the Red Wedding happened somewhere in between that, and like everyone dies. Um, and it's really bad, but then Arya gets her revenge. Last season. <laughs> Last season, super exciting. Everyone's pumped. They're all like, yeah, I'm going to go to the bar and watch it. Slowly as time goes by, interest goes further and further as people realize, oh shit, last season's bad. I'm sad now. I invested all this time. Uh, <laughs> and what happens is uh, there's a big fight against the, the, the White Walkers and then they all die. The White Walkers all die because Arya goes like stab to the, the to the White Walker King, and then everyone just dies. It was that easy, sure. And then, and then Cersei is like, oh, okay. And then Daenerys is like, nah, -uh, I'm gonna go against all my character development and burn your city down. <laughs> and everyone's really bummed about that. No one likes that. And then Jon Snow is like, I, I, you're my queen. And then he stabs her because she's become evil. <laughs> and and then Bran from the first episode, remember him? Uh, they give him the horrible moncure of Bran the Broken and name him King. And I think that's it. And everyone was disappointed. And now, and I'm done. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Uh, we have a comment that your cover of the theme song was A plus, uh, which I I fully I fully agree with. Also, I completely forgot about the whole brand the broken yeah. situation. Oh my goodness, everyone was talking about it, and everyone was messaging me, being like, "How do you, as a disabled person, feel about this ableist thing in a TV series that you haven't watched?" And I formulated opinions because you know um, people asked me, so I had to formulate them. Um, okay, we're gonna move into the next section because we're already there. Uh, but first, thank you so much for this wonderful entertainment. Now let us uh, deconstruct it in the next section, which is snacks and shots. I also just want to let people know uh, that during my transition for snacks and shots as a visual description, um there there's a little like popcorn person kind of swaying and it's very cute and it makes me quite happy I, <laughs> it pops up <laughs> so uh is it sounds like you know game of thrones pretty well uh i i just know it like the back of my hand which i don't know at all who knows the back of their hand it's true who really also okay does the back of your hands refer to you the palm of your hand like what is what is the front or back i guess that is a fair question but i would <laughs> is it a fair <laughs> question i never thought about this how does your mind work um, i would say this is the front but, but you're like, right why does it why is the palm the front well i feel like the palm is has all of the like lines in it and usually the things that are lined you say are like the back you know, it's like, it's not that the, the nice friends where like, cause like if you put a ring, like the stone of the ring is on the non palm side of your hand, right? Well, I was more like the front, the, the palm has like sensory stuff and like your face is in the front with the sensory stuff. I mean, that's a good point. I got- These are yeah. all good points. Oh my goodness, let's talk about snacks. Tell me more. So this is this is totally unsponsored because I wish I was sponsored, but I'm never sponsored. I just like products and then they don't like me back. Um, <laughs> well, this one in particular is because, okay, this is uh, way better snacks. Black bean, whole grain, corn, tortilla chips, sprouted black beans, flax and quinoa. And they are, I give them a three out of five. They are they are not that great, but I bought them. Um, they're like I really mean, meh. Sometimes, sometimes you have to go out on a limb, and it, you know, sometimes the reward is just meh. It happens. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a it's like a you know Tostitos chips with just seeds in it. Um, for a much more expensive price. Mm. But if you like that. Do you think that the taste is affected by the price? 
Actually, yeah, I maybe mean, if I didn't pay so much, I'd be like, this is much better. <laughs> maybe <laughs> you're right. And I have a second expensive thing. Ooh. These organic clouds. Now, this is interesting because I'm giving this a two, but it's not bad. It's a two, but they're very addictive. <laughs> it, you know, it's like you make, if it's a little bit not that great, you can have more of it, right? So uh, this is Frankie's organic clouds. <laughs> Like that. And what are clouds made out of? Um, apparently, all clouds are made out of uh, sprouted quinoa and brown rice. So that's what's in the sky right now. It's just quinoa and brown rice. I mean, that is very encouraging for when the sky falls. Yeah. Uh, when it crumbles and we will <laughs> stand tall uh, through it all together. Anyways, <laughs> do you have to, uh, do you, do you have to like, pay, pay uh, royalties for that? <laughs> Nothing is sponsored. We are not. Uh, we are not famous. Parodies, parodies, parodies. Predicted. Um, yeah, there's satirical uh, intent. Yeah. Well, it has the texture of Cheetos, but it has the taste of those like uh, white cheddar um, pop popcorn things. Smart food. Ooh, I love smart food. Mm hmm. <laughs> but it's not like the Cheetos is like kind of not as soft as Cheetos, more crunchy, and maybe it's the quinoa. Hmm. Can you hear the crunching? Like a tiny bit, but not <laughs> not much. I'm not trying hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a week in here. I'm very <laughs> jealous uh, because as much as I named this section snacks and chats, uh, I completely forgot to get my snacks. Which, oh my. yeah, it's sad. It's unfortunate. But we will like weather on through the torment, <laughs> um, knowing that right after the show ends, uh, I will have the raspberries that are in my fridge that I plan to be eating now. Maybe it's for the best. Raspberries are kind of messy. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, I figure because you know you just so brilliantly deconstructed Game of Thrones mm -hmm. uh, based off of uh, you know BuzzFeed uh, reactions. Um, I figure that you know that kind of leads into the question because most people most people are uh, using this pandemic time to uh, binge watch things. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very general statement, but uh, it's true for me. So I'm assuming that is true for more people. Um, is that is that a true statement for you? And whether it is or not, you know, tell us about how you're like what you are doing during this pandemic. Uh, pandemic is honestly it's working from home. Um, I read somewhere on Twitter that someone said it's more like living at work, and I don't know if I if I should say that's incorrect. It's very. It's, it's, <laughs> I don't know. I used to have this time where I would like go into work and like do my corporate business job and then go back home and like relax. But now I've like transformed this like one place into like a office-y thing. And like now my office is like right outside my bedroom, like a nightmare. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, but I don't know, that's, that's how things are when, when you're in a pandemic. But one of the fun things, fun things about a pandemic, I'm so sorry I said that. <laughs> It's not fun. It's not fun, but I'm trying to make fun happen in my life during this pandemic time, we're going to say. Wonderful. So like, I try to now match my outfits to my masks. Ooh. So that's like, so when I go out, right, I have to, if I'm wearing like a, like a blue thing, if I'm wearing jeans or like a denim kind of thing, then this blue matches very nicely. Um, if I have a if I have a, a white shirt with maybe like silver highlights, this this goes on well. And I have two more to show you. Um, this one is like a plain white mask, uh, and it's uh, Korean. Huang Huang Sa Pang whatever. Uh, I can read it. I promise. <laughs> uh, this one's just a plain white mask for everyday stuff, and this special one. Is like a fancy black mask that I'm saving for like a special occasion. Ooh, and it's still in the package. I know. And like, so what happened was these were like really high quality masks that were sold in Korea, but then I think for some reason they stopped selling them. So now it's like a limited edition item. So you can be very jealous of my fancy black Etika mask. 
I am very jealous of it. I, I've been dealing with just like one, I mean, to be honest, I don't leave my apartment, so it doesn't come out much. <laughs> <laughs> but I have just like two identical, very like basic black fabric uh, face masks. And then I also have some of those paper ones uh, for, you know, it gets so hot. It gets so hot. <laughs> and they're just a little bit lighter. But as I said, I really don't go outside. So, you know, instead I try to match things to my neck brace often. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm not usually successful though. I think I you are. I mean, my glasses are turquoise and there's navy in my brace, so it kind of it's within the blue family. Mm hmm It's like and, a really strong statement piece. <laughs> it's true. And then I just wear all black, uh, usually because I already have my statement piece going on uh around my neck. So <laughs> I remember I was overhearing some person talking and, and then she I think she was talking to her friend she's like oh yeah like when you're working in sales you need like a big necklace to like attract customers you're gonna see your sales go up if you wear like a big necklace I'm like oh fear you're gonna make so many sales if you just go to jail. <laughs> I am in the wrong profession <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, this is this is a good point. I do I do get a lot of interest from random strangers and passerby. Mm, uh, although I they, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you've you've been with me in in some of those moments. Um, I feel like you've been with me in in some Ubers uh, where uh, you get some questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite was when we ended up talking to someone for like 30 minutes and I was and I for sure thought you guys knew each other because the way she talked to you but you did <laughs> not know each other <laughs> I remember <laughs> This was just pre-pandemic mm. uh, when we were in uh, sort of a, a mall area below my building and it was someone who just had seen me in passing in the elevators of my building, but uh, we did not know each other. Um, and yeah, it was it was around half an hour. Uh, <laughs> you were very kind. I was very impressed. Uh, <laughs> you kept trying to find out like what she was off to do in order to help guide her <laughs> towards uh, doing it. Uh, whereas I just kind of was like, ah. <laughs> and in the end, I was like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Did you hear my stomach grumbling? I'm so hungry. I have to go now. <laughs> It was brilliant. <laughs> the presence of mind, the commitment. I truly, uh, it was it was a very impressive moment. Um, if we can leave anyone watching with a, with any key takeaway, is that if you want to get out of a conversation, a great way to do it is to just be like, oh, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Did you did you hear that? Oh, that was my stomach grumbling. I'm so sorry. I, I I think I have to go get some food. My apologies. But the thing is, she was like, oh, let's all go to the food court. And I had to <laughs> quickly spin up like, oh, uh, no, because actually we're late for lunch with a friend who's waiting <laughs> over there. You go to the food court. You <laughs> enjoy your timmies. <laughs> You go there, we'll go, go over here. As I recall, she wanted to start like a revolution within my building uh, to, you know, uh, talk about the, the faulty elevators and the fire alarms and all of that, uh, which I don't disagree with. It's just, you know, we were quite hungry. I was uh, absolutely hungry. <laughs> and you had to go for other reasons too. <laughs> like you were running late and we were dropped. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, <laughs> in the realm of, uh, you know, uh, trapped, I feel like, you know, we've talked about pandemic being trapped at home. This is becoming a theme in Westeros. They were trapped when, um, <laughs> when the th dragons, dragons trapped them. Close <laughs> enough, really. Like, we yeah. get all the points. We talk about dragons. That's it. That's all you have to know. That's all you have to know about Game of Thrones. Um, 
I am wondering what are what are some things that are that are keeping you happy right now? And wait, just before you answer, uh, I just want to also say to uh, to people watching, if you have any questions uh, about any of this or anything else, feel free to write them into the chat, uh, and we'll address them. But in the meantime, what are what, what what's making you happy right now? Um, I think what's making me happy is like talking to my friends and like taking long walks and getting lost in my neighborhood. Ooh. Like I used to walk a lot when I was like downtown. I think I really miss working as your corporate friend, <laughs> the one corporate friend you have, I maybe. Um, I just love walking the path every day and seeing all those business people doing their business. Um, but no, like walking is such a is a nice activity for me and, and talking to my friends is good and um uh, and like even, you know, doing this and sometimes, you know, I would reach out to you and we would watch movies together, like stuff like that. And like making sure you, you reach out and like connect with people. Cause it can be very, uh, social distancing. I'm moving my hands away from each other to show how people are getting spread further apart. So you gotta, and I'm putting my hands together to show you must be together. <laughs> That was a brilliant uh, description of the gestures and much appreciated. Um, you, you know, being my, my one corporate friend, uh, <laughs> uh, my one corporate friend who, who then also like, not only do you do improv, but like, I feel like you have many, like many creative things. Uh, you have such a creative brain uh, in general. How do you, do you find that there's any connection between those two worlds? Are they polar opposite? Give us give us some insider information on this. Um, I would say that like being cr creative or something like that. I'm not sure that actually <laughs> applies too much with my job, but what it m most of it is just like I have just I'm just a fun person. I'm just like a fun, a funny kind of guy, <laughs> and. <laughs> apparently people like that so when you're working in business where people are sometimes not as fun and amazing as me uh they're like wow you're like a funny guy i enjoy being in your presence stay on the team and i'm like yes yes <laughs> employment <laughs> um so as for creativity i don't know i just i just put my energies into doing my own personal projects right and like i like I like just message you a lot, really, as my most creative friend. I'm your corporate friend. You're my creative friend. Oh my goodness, I'm so flattered right now. Oh, enjoy that. <laughs> enjoy that feeling. Sit with it. Mm. I am. I'm like absorbing it. I feel. I feel. Uh, feel so good. I. I should say that. Michael is also like one of the most supportive humans. Uh, he comes to pretty much. Ever, like all of all of the things that I do, um, he saved me uh, from a set piece uh, falling on me uh, <laughs> at the start of a show. Ooh, we have someone who can confirm uh, that you are a funny guy. That is my friend. They are contractually obligated, as you know from our <laughs> friendship contract that you signed when we became friends. That to I did. Stuff like that. It's true. Uh, we met in uh, 2017. I uh, agreed to sign it in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to go over some slight revisions yeah. to the friendship contract. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one of them was that if something falls on me in the middle of a show, <laughs> you run up on stage and rescue me. Uh, that, was, that was part of the friendship contract as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Another one was uh, for you to uh, Marie Kondo my apartment. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> which uh, really quite changed my life. I still think about the way you taught me uh, how to fo properly fold and roll clothes. You, you do it like in thirds, right? And then you, then you roll it. Yeah, you kind of roll it or like fold it in thirds. Like you, like you make a, you, you take your clothes and you like fold it to be like a rectangle. I'm trying to move my body and my t-shirt to like show how it is. It's not working. But you fold the shirt into like thirds to make a long rectangle and you fold it again, basically until it becomes a fun little uh, blob, <laughs> square, squarish blob. Um, yeah, check out Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo, clean up your life. 
<laughs> Again, uh, we are not sponsored. Uh, we're not sponsored. We're not sponsored. <laughs> literally anything. We will mention lots of things. None of them are giving us money uh, because uh, I'm I'm the host, and as we establish, I'm an artist. Uh, and <laughs> those things don't don't go together. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny because like I like also sometimes have those dreams of being an artist, but instead I decided to go into library studies, which is the lowest paying like masters to to money making masters you can get so instead of choosing like uh artists which you know his, you know famously doesn't pay super amazingly i chose a masters which will put me into student debt which will also not pay me super amazingly but i love it i love it i mean that's the important thing maybe uh do you mind uh, sharing a little bit why library sciences what is it uh because I know slight inside information that you kind of uh, ended up there after a journey through improv. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I graduated, didn't really know what to do. I did improv, met Ophira, had a fun time. I like, I, I like improv. Like, I, I like it. Uh, and then, uh, true story, I started being pen pals with, like, a friend's kid who was, like, out of, in summer school. Or not summer school. He was not in school it was summer and then like uh like i want to give him like a fun activity for to practice his writing because i'm that kind of guy and i was like what do you want to be when you grow up when i was younger i always wanted to grow up to be a librarian and i was like i want to be a librarian so i pivoted super hard <laughs> and went to seneca joined the library and information science uh technician program and got my diploma there. And then I enrolled into University of Alberta's uh, online uh, information science course and never looked back, I guess. I, I love it. Sometimes you just find the thing that you love. And uh, yeah. That's so beautiful. And also so lovely of the idea of like, wait a minute, I always wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes like when you go back to, to like, what you liked as a kid that's like kind of is something that can say to what you sh should not should be but could be and you would you can enjoy i yeah that's so that's a very interesting thought because uh when i was a kid i think when i was really little i i was pretty but uh when i was five four or five i decided that i wanted to be in the arts um in a very i like saw a musical it was beauty and the beast and i was like yes that uh that's that's what i want to do and then in my brain i'm like yeah well and then from then i went on a journey from like i did opera and then i did writing and that was completely different and then i did comedy which is so different too and then i like got into uh like advocacy and public speaking and then still comedy and then back into singing and it's funny when I sit back and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and my brain is like this huge tumultuous like journey with all these curves. But if you actually sit back and look at it, I'm still excited about the same things I was excited about when I was five years old watching uh, my first musical, which, yeah, I wonder how often we all kind of take that step back and go, huh. Yeah, and like to figure out you, what you like really want to do despite like, okay, let's say like, okay, I'm here on this show because you think I'm funny and like good at improv or whatever. Um, <laughs> also but, because I just like talking to you and it's my slumber party. So uh, I get to hang out with the people I like. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, if I really like, if it was like uh, something I really wanted to do, maybe this is something I would pursue, but that's where the thing is like, sometimes it's not about what you're good at. It's about what you want to do. Right? You don't want to be led astray by your talents when really you want to do something else, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, I can't count the number of times I've caught myself saying things or being in conversation uh, with other people where they're torn between the idea of what is the right, like quote unquote, right pathway. And often that ties into feelings of like, this feels more responsible than that. Mm. Um, but as you kind of said, there isn't necessarily a guarantee in any pathway that it's going to automatically lead to more stability or to to certain hours or, or to anything 
and often like I've caught myself being like, hmm, yeah, you know, I, uh, I really love singing, but I should, I should stick with comedy. That seems more, um, or things like that. When it's like, what, what am I talking about? <laughs> like, first of all, I can do both. But second of all, why is one more quote unquote responsible than the other? Both of them are, are you know, very floaty things that you have to commit yourself to, to pursue anyways. Um, but I feel like sometimes we have such a block, either it's self-doubt or just the idea that if something feels exciting, that it has to be wrong somehow. Like it's a guilty pleasure as opposed to just being a thing, a thing that we can enjoy doing and also work hard at and uh, and see see where it gets us. Oh my gosh, we reached that part of the slumber party where we share deep secrets with each other. It's true, it's bonding. true. Bonding. <laughs> Hashtag bonding. And then you're like, <laughs> you've gone through the, the makeover aspects, which, you know, with the masks and such. And, uh, <laughs> and then you're sharing deep truths and discovering the universe. Um, but you know, the next stage in this, uh, <laughs> such a good segue. Thank you so much. You like set it up and now I'm talking about it. Knock it out. <laughs> um, because it was so good because we're going to go into the next stage of our slumber party, which is silliness. <laughs> I've lowered my hair to to be more silly, it's gone down. This is uh, what we call fourteen year old Michael look. <laughs> it's it's a good look, uh, just for <laughs> just for anyone wondering. Um, it it was good before, but um, I feel like I should. I don't know. This is the thing with side bangs. They only they only go to the they're side. They're called side bangs. They're not called front bangs. They're not they're not called front bangs. <laughs> front bangs. It would be a different situation. Uh, <laughs> so silliness. Um, okay, we have talked about a number of things for the silliness portion of this show because we are both very silly humans <laughs> and have uh, a, a lot of ideas. So I'm just going to ask you right now, how are you feeling? What do you want to do for this activity? I want to do that one time where I found this book on etiquette from 1901. And they're super, <laughs> they're from 1901 for America, and they're like super old. And like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. They're just sometimes wild. And um, if, wait, just a heads up you are being told to work those bangs. Uh, just how about to you? <laughs> work their bangs too. There you go. <laughs> Mine are on the side. I can't do You're anyway, working at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Book of Etiquettes published in 1901. Yes. Having selected our guests, we should send the invitations two weeks in advance of the time set for the dinner. You did not do this, Ophira. I'm so sorry. I publicized this show this morning. <laughs> you did not invite me so early, and now I am feeling miffed. I'm so sorry. I'm not I'm being miffed. This is, this is a bit. I love you. Oh my god. <laughs> Keep going. Tell me uh, how the Edwardian era uh, <laughs> tells me I should I should do this show. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> let's see. The usual hour is at seven or half after seven. And for a more ceremonious dinner, eight or half after eight o'clock is the fashionable hour. So unfortunately, you're not fashionable. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the call time for the show was half past eight o'clock. True! Fashion! Fashion! Fashion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I try. No young woman visitor should receive calls from her men friends without asking her hostess or hostesses to be present, leaving the option with them. You. I mean, I'm trying to see if I have any like stuffed animals around me, <laughs> but, I, can, but I, I, I think they're on the other side of the room. Mm, they are present, the room. I swear, there's supervision. Uh, there's a panda bear that's that's just over there. I turned the camera, but my room's not not. And clean. we have all these guests in the comments, so we're not alone. It's true. Thank you to everyone watching for <laughs> chaperoning and keeping us uh, in line with Edwardian etiquette rules. 
If a lady is behind her tea table, she need not rise to greet a man caller, but bow, give her hand if convenient, and gracefully include him in the conversation. You know, this seems to be inclusive for people in wheelchairs. Uh, I'm really glad that I don't have to stand mm -hmm. um, because that would be ableist um, as opposed to everything else going on <laughs> in this book. Thank goodness that we dodged that bullet. A lady never goes into the vestibule to meet a man, however intimately she may know him, but she greet him only in the parlor. Could you imagine going to the vestibule to meet a man? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, question, what is a vestibule? I had to Google this too, I didn't know. It is like the right in front entrance behind the door, like right where the door is. Like in so, your big manner, the, the entryway mm -hmm. to your, to the, like where the front door is right behind it. Oh, so basically someone has to like walk further into your home to be greeted. Yes, by the hostess. I mean, I guess that's quite dramatic. It does feel <laughs> like you're really, it's like someone going into like the jowls of the, <laughs> of the manor. Uh, but etiquette, we must, uh, we, we must subscribe. And one of my, one of my personal favorites is, um, neither should she ever accompany a man to the hall, but take leave of him in the drawing room. Under no circumstances does a lady help a man on with his overcoat, struggle as he may. So you let him struggle. Never help a man with his overcoat. Do you want to be rude? Let him struggle. <laughs> I mean, this is an instance where toxic masculinity really, again, helps uh, not making disabled people have to do physical tasks. Um, we, we have a question because, you know, for the vestibule, you know, you can't go there to meet a man friend, apparently. But uh, according to the book, could you could you go there to meet a woman friend? Um, so I did not read all 531 pages of this book. <laughs> I'm sure it's in the man explanation section. <laughs> I do recall from us going through that there are quite uh, strict rules in general, and also that these rules um, apply to how uh, how much you like the person as well. Mm -hmm. There were some rules that were like, if you find them particularly disagreeable, you know, then you can behave in this way, but only if they're like very disagreeable. Yeah. The next part talks about the proper etiquette for men. Um, men are privileged to call after any, wait, men are privileged to call any afternoon from five until half after six o'clock. So if it's outside of times, never meet a man. Never. I mean, I really wonder how this applies to the online world. <laughs> I do remember, I I have to pull it up, that there was this whole section on having guests that uh, that I was quite curious about. <laughs> I'll see, I'll see if I can get it here. It was all of the rules of being a guest because it was like, you know, uh, it's 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 very important to, to do it right, you know, to be the right kind of guest. So if we're critiquing my uh, hosting <laughs> abilities. My turn. I think it's only fair. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find it. I believe it was page 294, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, yes, the duties of a guest. Oh. As I went at my small phone. It does not require a Solomon to draw up a code of laws for the conduct of the guest. <laughs> One may say, it is not a difficult role to play. And yet, anyone who has had the least experience in entertaining knows that one guest may be a killjoy and another an inspiration. No pressure. Was that your edition or in the book? That was my edition. Okay. I was like, whoa, 1901, really bringing that. Really saucy. <laughs> It begins with the invitation, a ready acceptance is flattering, and a prompt regret and evidence of good breeding. Yikes. 
and thoughtful consideration. It is a mistaken idea that a tardy regret seems to convey reluctance. I mean, you're good there. You accepted the invitation to the slumber party very readily. I felt like I won a raffle, like, as a guest. Like, oh my god, I got to go on a show. It was very flattering. Uh, you really, you really, you really did this. Um, oh, punctuality is said to be a royal virtue. Um, and the heads of the nation set an example of the most minute exactitude in that respect <laughs> as a matter of pure courtesy. Uh, nothing is more trying to the temper of a hostess and cook than belated guests, and no one has the right to sacrifice others to his convenience. You know, I really appreciate that uh, this 1901 book is uh, advocating for setting boundaries and being like, no, like people shouldn't waste your time. People should respect your time. It's very important. I have one to share. Please go for it. This book also tells you not to talk about the three Ds. Someone has said that the three Ds are not discussed in polite society. Dress, domestics, which would be your servants, and diseases. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I talked about what I was wearing, <laughs> and I feel like I've said that I'm disabled multiple times throughout the show. It's impossible to have a conversation with me that I don't just like say, by the way, I'm disabled. Did you know um, I'm uh, disabled? Disabled. Disabled is me. Um, I am disabled. As long as you didn't talk about your manservants, then I think you're okay. You're not I mean, three strikes out. If I won the lottery, all I want is a personal assistant slash butler figure slash driver like that is that is the ultimate uh the ultimate dream that I have however I have not won the lottery and therefore uh do not have a person right. it's really fun <laughs> just win it sometimes <laughs> just sometimes yeah oh but... you haven't whoa <laughs> like why haven't you <laughs> have you not been trying do you like not want to win i don't because <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to then <laughs> you would win the lottery that's, yeah that's how life works yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> apologies for the slight segue into how people talk about all forms of illness <laughs> In case that wasn't clear, you know, context. Context is everything. Um, go, go on. I interrupted you. Oh no, that was it. There was that was that was the three Ds. That's it. I mean, it's very important to know. I don't think that I will be able to uh, to stick to those rules. It's very it's very opposite of you know everything that I believe in. Mm hmm. And you know. I think we can say we don't need to follow rules from 119 years ago. <laughs> Are you sure, though? <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> pretty sure. Pretty, pretty certain. <laughs> um, can you just tell us briefly where, how did you stumble across this book? What is, what is the story behind the discovery of this? Um, I love archive.org. It's a great resource for uh, old books that are scanned and preserved. They do a wonderful job. And I just kind of stumbled upon this really funny book. And I was like, Ophira, check out this book. <laughs> and then we had a wonderful evening going through and reading, uh, reading the rules that we stumbled across. Um, which now we have shared with all of the all of the wonderful people watching the show, uh, whether they're watching right now or whether they will, you know, catch the caption version uh, when it's posted later. Hello, future people. Hello, the future. Are you okay? I hope you're okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we we send light and love uh, to the future. And to the presence, the presence as well. Um, <laughs> well, this is this is bringing us uh, to the end of of the party of the slumber, closer to the slumber, uh, and uh, towards the end of the party. But I just want to say, is there anything that you want people to know about? Any any last little little bits that you want to tell people? 
uh, your local libraries are often open now. You can go in and borrow books and uh, return books and just go to your local library, please. That and is be safe. Safe about it. <laughs> and be safe. Wash the hands. Um, that is such a good thing to plug. Also, you can get library books online. You can get a library card with just your phone number now, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. And you can borrow so many books if you download Libby and connect it with your library card. Reading is forever. Reading is fundamental. Um, amazing. <laughs> okay, that is bringing us to the end of the show. But Michael, thank you. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, also, thank you so much to Connor, who uh, has been teching this whole show and all of the shows and is wonderful. Thank you to Bad Dog Comedy TV for having us on this platform. One last plug, if you want to donate uh, towards the show, the link is uh, below the video, and that would be very appreciated. Also, last chance to tell me if you like my bangs. Um, I really would appreciate the validation <laughs> or the direction to adjust accordingly. Um, but thank you all so, so much. Thank Have you. A wonderful evening. <laughs>